When using the S-Series cameras for video, you have lots of different ways to customize the autofocus system. Let me show you all the different autofocus customizations and how to use them. So let's show you where you access the different autofocus options of the camera. Uh, press this button right here, and that gives you access to your different autofocus functions. Camera defaults to the single point autofocus, or one area. And within one area, you can adjust the size of the one area box. We're going to leave it in its default. So what we'll do is we're going to have our model Dawn. She's going to walk out a little scene for us. Dawn, why don't you come into camera? Now what you should notice is as Dawn walks to go pick up that puck, she's gotten out of the box, so her focus may have drifted a little bit. It's now locked on Dawn. She's going to put the puck into the camera, but you'll see Dawn has put the puck above where our target is, which means I'd have to move the target up to get it to focus. Go ahead and drop the puck target now. Now Dawn's back in focus. Go ahead and move back over and uh, finish the scene. So now because I've left that box right there, it's not going to follow Dawn particularly effectively right now. And now Dawn moves back into camera and she's on that mark and it's locked on her because that's where the marker was. So obviously for a scene like this, this is not the appropriate autofocus to choose unless you want to stand here and follow Dawn with the autofocus box. Let's try a couple of different options to see if we can get better results. So Dawn, if you want to take your mark again. So we'll press our autofocus box. We have one area plus, which is going to give us a single area of autofocus plus a little bit of area outside of that. So if Dawn moves a little outside the focus box, it'll still follow her. Well, that's probably not going to work any better for this scene than the one point did. So our next option is our zone or oval autofocus, which allows us to choose the area size that we'd like for the zone to work. Uh, for this demonstration, I think we're going to move on to a different function, which would be our 225 area autofocus, which is going to give us full coverage over 90% of the screen area. Let's try a different one. So Don, why don't I have you move back to, back to your spot? So we're going to try tracking mode. And tracking mode is going to lock on Don, in particular a color of Don's shirt. So I'm going to choose to lock on Don's. Uh, let's lock on her chest right there on her shirt. And as Dawn kind of sways left to right, you can see that that box will track with her. Why don't you go ahead and move left to right quite a bit? So you can see it's following Dawn wherever she goes. So Dawn, we'll have you go ahead and take your mark. We'll touch on Dawn's shirt. Get it locked on. Press record. Dawn, come on in scene. All right, so it's kept her locked. Go ahead and put the puck up but you'll see it's not locking on the puck because it's on her shirt. So if we select the puck, now the puck is in focus. Go ahead and drop the puck. I need to touch her shirt again, now it's locked in. Go ahead and walk back. I'll touch Dawn to get it tracking. Dawn will come back into frame. And that kept us locked in and we had to do minimal interruptions with using the touch screen. The last function we're gonna to touch on is face tracking. So what you should notice is we do face tracking right now. There's a box that's over Dawn's face and there's a little crosshash that's locked on her left eye or her right eye, my left. If I touch the other eye, I can choose to have that be the eye that we focus on. So Dawn, we'll have you move back to your mark. And as you notice, as Dawn turns away, it becomes a body tracking tool. So it's actually now tracking her body instead. So when she turns away from camera, it'll track body. And when she comes into camera, it'll track her body until the face is able to be recognized. Let's see how this works. Press record. Go ahead and begin. So we're good. Go ahead and show the puck. Now go ahead and put the puck down. Go ahead and start walking. Now come back in the frame. So that worked extremely well, but you'll notice there was a little bit of a delay when Dawn showed us the puck between it focusing from her face to the puck because the camera was still trying to keep locked on her face. This has to do with the responsiveness and the speed of the system. So what I want to do is set this back to 225 point AF. So we're back to 225 area. You want to be in AF custom settings for video. From here, we go to set. We have AF speed and AF sensitivity. 
If Don were in a sit-down interview, I would want the speed set to very slow, so it's not constantly changing the autofocus. But in this case, we needed to track her quickly, so we're going to set it to plus three. There's also sensitivity. So adjusting the sensitivity, again, if it was an interview, we would set it to negative three, so it's not changing consistently as Don moves forward or backward in the interview. But again, in this situation, we need a responsive uh, autofocus, so we're going to set it to plus two. Now we have the system on, and we're ready to begin. So Don, why don't you go ahead and take your mark. Okay. Now we're going to start recording, and go begin. We've got good tracking. It's got Don in focus. Go ahead and put it up. It's got our pocket focus. Go ahead and go and finish the scene. And then Don will come back into camera. It's tracked her the whole time. We've got great responsiveness. And we've got our take. And that's how you customize the autofocus system on the S-series of cameras.